Hello, welcome to another in our series of topics and keywords in human animal studies. My name is Ken Shapiro. I am co founder of Animals and Society Institute, editor of the Society of Animals Journal, and co editor of the Journal of Applied Animal Welfare Science. My topic today is kinesthetic empathy. Kinesthetic empathy refers to a method developed to gain access to the subjective life of non human animals and hence to understand their contribution to an experience of human-animal relationships. We include it in this series of key terms as it attempts to address two problematics in the field. Both deal with the provision of methods for the field. The first is the need to develop methods that provide access to beings who do not have a full-blown language, or to hedge our bets to beings whose language we do not Fully understand. The second is the problem of providing methods that avoid anthropomorphizing the animal side of human-animal relationships. To date, human-animal studies has largely proceeded by expanding or adding and adapting existing methods to make them more applicable to the study of human-animal relationships. As an example of the expansion of a method, Animal-centered literary criticism recognizes the agentic role of animals in much fiction, that more than just symbols, they are significant characters and actors. As an example of an adaptation, symbolic interactionism has been modified to include analysis of the ways animals communicate ver non-verbally and so shape a particular human-animal relationship. But another approach is to develop sui generis methods, methods specifically tailored for the study of human-animal relationships. As an attempt to provide such a method, kinesthetic empathy combines three moves, a form of empathy, social construction, and personal history. Empathy refers to an act in which an individual takes up the perspective of another individual. It is a feeling with, as distinguished from sympathy, which is a feeling for. It is descriptive rather than evaluative. Although often a precursor of empathy, the description can be used for either beneficial or detrimental purposes, compassionate action on the one hand, or exploitation, as in brainwashing, on the other. The taking up is never complete, as it is always colored by the perspective of the empathizer. As investigator, I always have my own perspective on the subject's perspective. In the study of human-animal relationships, language, whether through survey, interview, or just listening to the subjects of the study, is a major tool as it at least partially circumvents the influence or intrusion of the my perspective component. As language is less useful in the study of non-human animals, empathy through sensitivity to the bodily posture, gesture, movement, and behavior of the animal can complement existing paralinguistic communicative abilities. Kinesthesia refers to this sensitivity to the body of the other. More than a reading of the body as if it were a text, as the term language, body language implies, kinesthetic empathy requires taking up, occupying, or embodying the lived body of another individual. To deal with the limitations of empathy, my bodily experience of your bodily experience, the method includes two aids, social construction and personal history. Social construction refers broadly to the ways we have shaped a particular group of animals through the institutions we have developed that involve them, the lab, factory, farm, zoo, sanctuary, park, home, and the language by which we refer to them. It is critical in the study of an individual animal and human-animal relationship to sort out which aspects of social construction have shaped the animal or animals under study and so need to inform our understanding of the relationship and which are not applicable as they distort our understanding and so need to be deconstructed. For example, a black cat carries the history of association with witchcraft and more recently of bad luck. It also obviously intersects with both gender and race. Those constructions may or may not be informing the human-cat relationships under study. The second aid and third component of the method 
is personal history. An individual animal has a set of life experiences that have shaped him or her, as well as the form of the particular human-animal relationship. It is critical to understand and describe these experiences. In effect, to write a biography of the animal. The move to kinesthetically empathize with the target animal then is in continual dialogue with the currently operative social constructions and the biographical narrative of the animal. In conclusion, kinesthetic empathy is a method that is tailored to the study of human-animal relationships. Its three components, kinesthetic empathy, informed by social construction and individual biography, provide reasonable assurance that even absence the possibility of a fully verbal exchange, an understanding of the subject, subjective life of the non-human animal in a human-animal relationship can avoid anthropomorphism. Not incidentally, it also avoids anthropocentrism, as it largely assures that the study will give adequate weight to the animal side of a relationship. Thank you for listening.